The Three Moons Initiative In the SCP universe, a number of different secretive groups fight for and protect humanity from the wolves at the door, so to speak, including, of course, the SCP Foundation, the GOC, and even the Church of the Broken God, to a degree. One group that really cares deeply about humanity's fate and works to protect us from quite far away is the Three Moons Initiative. The fact that they can help us at all is pretty impressive, as they're all dead, and they reside in Corbinic, the strange afterlife detailed in SCP-2922. While knowledge of SCP-2922 will enhance some details about the Three Moons Initiative, it's not strictly necessary, and I'll recap what you need to know as we go. To start with, let's take a look at Corbinic itself again. As detailed in SCP-2922, the Foundation inadvertently stumbled upon a way to communicate with the dead after death, using a Foundation researcher named Janet Spiegel as their guinea pig. Janet had died in a car accident while embedded with an anomalous chip that facilitated communication, and she woke up in the afterlife of Corbinic, a mysterious realm filled with various creatures, including other humans. The Foundation was overjoyed at the opportunity, but after Janet's repeated requests to speak with her living husband were denied, she stopped supplying the Foundation with information. This eventually led to the Foundation's Operation Galahad, where they lied to MTF agents and killed them to send them into Corbinic in order to provide intel on the afterlife and to capture Janet. The operation was not a big success, and that was pretty much it. Corbinic is not exactly a hospitable place, and although the dead people that get sent there typically can't die again, there are some unfortunate fates that can be encountered there. Massive primates called Striders can pick you up and feed you to the Witch Queen of Bogle Mountain, which you'll survive but be deeply traumatized when you pass through. You can fall into the organic Chitin Sea, being lost forever in an ocean of organs and organic tissue. You can be frozen by large mechanical frogs to negative 20 degrees Celsius, leading to a painful recovery. As mentioned though, there are plenty of humans in Corbinic, and while most of them congregate in various small villages as they carry through their afterlife, others have organized into something a bit more. The Three Moons Initiative was formed roughly 14,000 years ago in Corbinic, as the first true organization of humanity in the afterlife. While existence in Corbinic is often fraught with danger, especially for newcomers, living without death does have its advantages, allowing humans there to perpetually expand and develop. From where the Foundation's standing, the Three Moons Initiative possesses a disproportionately high military strength compared to their own. There is a drawback though, as organic matter can never leave Corbinic, meaning that any interaction the initiative has with our world is done through drones and other remote controlled machines sent through a portal located on the dark side of the moon. It seems that if the initiative truly wanted to cause problems for us, they could, and so a treaty was formed between the foundation and the initiative, although it's admittedly shaky. The reason for that is partly because one of the military leaders of the Three Moons Initiative is, of course, Janet Spiegel, who is especially vocal in her opposition to the Foundation. Fortunately though, the Three Moons Initiative's primary goal is to protect and safeguard humanity from all threats. We'll get to exactly how they do this by looking at a few SCPs in a bit. They also serve to judge the sins of all the deceased that enter Corbinic, a process carried out by their Perdition Committee. Depending on a majority vote, the deceased individual is either punished or rewarded for their deeds in life, although I can't imagine that the process always gets things right. The leader of the Three Moons Initiative currently is also its original founder, the Eternal President, Gerard Sebastian Niang. The Eternal part is not to be taken literally, as there is a planned election in a couple thousand years. Gerard was born in Senegal, in an alternate timeline of Earth, and worked for that timeline's version of the SCP Foundation as a site director. In the year 2329, the
The Sarkic cults in that timeline summoned something that they thought was their leader, Grand Karsist Ion, but was decidedly not, resulting in an impending end of the world scenario. The world had five years of warning as the creature moved towards Earth, with no plan to stop it. Gerard decided to try and do something about it the day before it arrived, after watching the series finale of Sesame Street, in which Elmo expresses fear over the end of the world. Since all of the Foundation's files had been declassified by this point, he stumbled across the file for SCP-3319, a global occult coalition project that could basically teleport the Earth to a far-off solar system in the Crab Nebula. This was all pretty theoretical though, of course, as it had never been used, and diagnostics predicted it only had a 30% chance of success. Breaking protocol, Gerard managed to activate the device, and needless to say, it didn't work as planned. Instead of going to another solar system, Earth was taken to Corbinic, killing everyone on Earth in the process. The Striders, the giant primate natives of Corbinic, launched an attack on the recent arrivals, and Gerard rallied the remnants of the Foundation, along with the central government of their Earth, and other armed factions to fight in the First Harvesting War. Niang became a hero to the remaining humans of his Earth, and also gained the respect of a local entity named Jalakara, who also despised the Striders. Dalakara is an incredibly powerful reality bender, basically akin to a god in Corbinic, with the appearance of a gigantic spider with a human face and beard. Dalakara resides in a fortress located thousands of light years above Corbinic, known as the Impenetrable. Having a partnership with Dalakara resulted in the creation of the Lunar Dawn Initiative, their name until after the Second Harvesting War when it became the Two Moons Initiative. Presumably, that other timeline of Earth became the first moon near Corbinic, until another one showed up, resulting in the Second Harvesting War, and then eventually a third showed up during the Third Harvesting War. At this point, the group became known as the Three Moons Initiative. Currently, Gerard acts as the human leader of both the military and the civilians of the Initiative, Many of their local media outlets accuse him of abusing his authoritarian power for personal gain. So to assuage these concerns, he undergoes annual humbling sessions. These sessions are top secret and carried out by Jalakara himself, involving excruciating physical and psychological torture. After these humbling sessions were put into place, media outlets have accused the president of ineptitude and indecisiveness so clearly the sessions did something. Aside from the president, 13 other individuals are allowed to directly address Jalakara, and they make up the Central Cabal. The Central Cabal is granted a small portion of Jalakara's power, but they primarily act as Jalakara's advisors for any interactions with humanity. Jalakara uses its abilities to provide the initiative with energy and resources, and in return, the initiative worship it as a deity, carry out its wishes, and allow it the final say in all administrative matters. The presence of a deity in charge of the initiative is part of why the Foundation really doesn't trust the group, as this is a non-human running a group that apparently has humanity's best interests at heart. Let's look at how they might take care of humanity's best interests, though, by looking at a few anomalies they've been responsible for. One avenue they've approached is the continued moral safeguarding of humanity, as they're consistently concerned with the sins of those that die and enter Corbinic. To better guide humanity's morals, they sent us SCP-3922, a small metal cylinder with three moons engraved on one side and the word reassurance on the other. It was found by the foundation at a garage sale in Kenosha, Wisconsin, where the owner described it as a sort of morality filter for the TV. When placed within one meter of a television set or computer, the cylinder will alter the contents of any video played. Additional characters or elements will appear in the footage, 
typically armed with high-powered energy-based weaponry and other futuristic equipment, and will punish any and all crimes committed during the video. The severity of the punishment is always in line with the rating of the rest of the content, however, so Winnie the Pooh won't be decapitated for ruining Rabbit's garden. At the end of each modified video, three moon symbols will be shown, along with the initiative slogan, You are watched, you are protected, you are loved. Let's look at some specific examples then. A modified copy of the animated film Pinocchio showed a tactical squadron of advanced troops arriving on Pleasure Island in dropships, transforming the transformed donkeys back into children, using devices labeled Tactical Undonkification Ordinance. The coachman, responsible for tricking and taking the children, is instantly vaporized by a bombardment of energy weapon fire. Lampwick is taken to a substance abuse rehabilitation center. Monstro the Whale is disintegrated by an orbital energy weapon. The Blue Fairy is arrested for unlicensed reanimation of plant tissue. And Pinocchio is informed by a tactical child psychiatry associate that real boyhood is subjective. In an altered copy of The Dark Knight, the Joker is killed by several combat drones utilizing plasma-based weaponry. Bruce Wayne is taken into custody for 39 separate counts of extortion, and the film ends with initiative troops taking control of Gotham City until law and order can be restored. In a copy of the film Space Jam, it is presented as a biographical drama of the life of Michael Jordan, with no cartoon characters present. At one point, though, a character mentions a news story in which a corrupt intergalactic amusement park was destroyed by initiative troops, but Michael dismisses the story as ridiculous. As a particularly graphic example, a copy of the 1975 film Salo was used, which involves four wealthy men in fascist Italy who kidnap 18 young men and women and perform unspeakable torture on them. In the altered copy, the four men are quickly terminated by sniper fire, and the footage cuts to the desert of Korbenik where the four now dead men are picked up by initiative ships and taken to a facility where they are submerged in tanks filled with gel, a process that seems to be extremely painful. The remaining eight hours of footage simply shows the men in the tanks, their faces distorted in pain and agony, where they will apparently be kept for quite some time. The ending card is also altered in this footage, instead reading, You have been warned. The Initiative have become the judges, juries, and executioners of the afterlife, and want to warn humanity to live good lives, or there will be consequences. Speaking of punishing fascists, the Three Moons Initiative seems to be especially concerned with that, as they also sent us SCP-2578. 2578 is a series of phenomena that has resulted in the deaths of at least 100 humans since 1995. These individuals all share some common traits, as they were political figures intending to engage in activities such as ethnic cleansing, government-sponsored slavery, war crimes, and establishment of absolute control of the national press, media, and religion. All of these individuals also possessed the full capabilities to carry out these political activities had they not died. 72 hours prior to each of their deaths, the individual will receive an email from a sender listed only as the Three Moon symbol, and the text will always be consistent. It opens with the Latin phrase, Sic Semper Tyrannis, meaning thus always to tyrants, and the subject's latitude and longitude coordinates. The first message will contain the number 144, and the text, I never miss my mark abdicate and you will live, in a number of different languages. Every 30 minutes, another email will be received, with the number decreased by one until it reaches zero. The subject can stop this countdown by resigning from their post, or stopping the offending crimes, or surrendering to a war crimes tribunal or resistance movement, or of course, suicide. If not, however, when the countdown reaches zero, a hole will appear throughout the individual's body, starting at the top of their head and ending at their groin, 
inevitably killing them. This execution occurs regardless of where the individual is located, with no damage to any of the surrounding area. After the death of the individual, or if they manage to stop the event from occurring, an email will be sent to a number of people associated with the individual, typically informing them of the event and encouraging them to abandon their fear of tyranny, and letting them know that the Three Moons Initiative will always watch, protect, and love them. In 2016, the Foundation managed to track down the machine responsible, a metallic spacecraft about three meters in length that travels around Earth's atmosphere to carry out the events. It uses its tail to fire a projectile that is not currently understood by the Foundation to execute the individuals. I'm sure the execution is just the start of their problems, though, once these individuals arrive in Corbinic to be judged. So it would seem that the Three Moons Initiative primarily care about us not especially due to an interest in our prolonged existence, but rather that we live good, moral lives so we avoid punishment in the afterlife. The punishment that they themselves will carry out. This lends a very weird, authoritarian feel to the Initiative, who enforce a moral life based on their ideas of morality, backed by a deific spider reality bender. There is definite cause for concern by the Foundation, especially since the Three Moons can't seem to handle every problem in their own dimension, let alone ours. SCP-3768 is a ritual involving 3.7 grams of zinc, at least 400 grams of table salt, no more than 5 grams of silver, and 7 honeybee carcasses. If placed around a civilian FM radio in a specific formation, Within 500 kilometers of Baltimore, Maryland, the radio will be able to access an anomalous radio station. The station identifies itself as Three Moons Public Radio, and features a constant stream of news and editorials from Corbinic. The host has allegedly never gone off the air for the last 300 years, and identifies as a 27-year-old female of French Senegalese descent named Julie Niang. Whether or not she's related to Gerard Niang isn't stated. Examples of a few recordings show Julie wishing a region or town named Dry's Edge good morning at 8 a.m. Old Eastern Standard Time, and says that it's 62 degrees out, so wear a light jacket if headed to the meat tree market. A piece of news discusses the Elephant King of the Marble Hall, who announced that he's temporarily sober for the first time in 300 years. In regards to the 30,000 captives of his so-called meat orgies, the Elephant King responded with, This was never a part of the plan. The Soma was tainted from the start. None of us can stop. I cannot stop. I am scared. Please help us. In an interview with what seems to be John Lennon, he discusses his song Imagine, and the irony of the afterlife of Corbinic, which is both heaven and hell at the same time, and contains a few trillion countries all locked in a war with one another. When asked about the Strider situation, he mentions that he's got a song about it on his upcoming album, titled Dead Monkey, Good Monkey, which is a particularly angry track. He notes that the Striders gave peace a chance, but then ate it like everything else. In another news story, the Central Cabal unanimously passed the mandatory pan corbanese Human Sterilization Act, which would result in the forced sterilization of everyone on Corbinic, preventing them from having any more children. This resulted in plenty of controversy, as some believed the right to conceive children was inalienable. But the reasoning for the act was because children born in Corbinic are mortal, unlike those born outside of Corbinic. When a mortal person dies in Corbinic, they are sent to the Sister Universe, aka our universe, where they are then immortal. Basically, it's a reversal of situations, and the president says that although Corbinic is designed for immortals, our universe is not. This means that for those that become immortal in our universe, they'll either end up floating through space in some sort of unending nightmare, or end up in Foundation custody neither of which is a happy, free scenario. 
The Three Moons press secretary, Lyndon B. Johnson, assures that the sterilization process is painless, non-invasive, and doesn't affect libido. So that's nice. The real breaking news comes next, though, with the announcement that the Witch Queen of Bogle Mountain died of liver failure. This came as quite a shock, as the initiative and residents of Korbenik all assumed her to be immortal. Her last words were reportedly translated to be, I find food planet. It's believed by the initiative that the Witch Queen will go the same way as that of Korbenik born humans, meaning she'll end up in our universe. The initiative sends the Foundation a note, letting them know that at some point in the coming months, the reality warping 10 kilometer tall immortal primate known as the Witch Queen is going to enter a trajectory in our universe en route to Earth. If attacked before arrival, there's a negligible chance of neutralization, but if attacked when she's at all close to Earth, this chance drops to zero. They also note that she's aware of SCP-3319, which the Foundation could use to try and travel to another solar system, but she's going to smash it first to prevent that. The precogs in the initiative's R&D predict a best possible outcome of losing only 89.5% of humanity. To reassure the Foundation, they say that they've fought five wars against the Witch Queen and her Striders, and won two of them. They also note that this is the angriest they've seen Jalakara in a millennium, as his grudge with the Witch Queen predates multicellular life. This is not incredibly reassuring though, as it begs the question of why Jalakara hasn't dealt with such a hated enemy beforehand. The note ends by them saying that even if the Witch Queen does cause their extinction, drinks are on them when we all arrive in Korbenik. You are watched, you are protected, and win or lose, you are loved. Well, yes, yet another eldritch entity on the way to Earth to wipe out all life, so nothing really new there. The interesting thing to take away from this one, though, is that if someone is born in Korbenik, they'll eventually die and become immortal in our world. This explains the old man that the Foundation stumbled upon in their incursions into Korbenik, who they witnessed dying, despite everyone seeming to be immortal. Another takeaway is that there are many different universes which contain Earth that all connect to Korbenik, which is why it's stated that there are trillions of countries in Korbenik. However, what isn't quite as clear is which one of these universes a person goes to if they die in Korbenik, or do they somehow go to all of them? Korbenik is a really interesting setting, which by itself doesn't have a great deal to do with the SCP Foundation and the anomalous situation on Earth. The Three Moons Initiative, however, adds a nice touch to things to connect the two dimensions, as they not only care about our human population, but every human population across the multiverse. They want us all to live good moral lives so that we can someday die, come to Korbenik, be judged, and fall under the Three Moons purview. As time goes on, the initiative is going to grow larger and larger and become more technologically proficient, not to mention their patron deity who has his own thoughts on the matter. Who's to say they won't eventually decide to save some time and just wipe us all out? so we can immediately join them in Korbenik, or perhaps do something worse. Well, it's always nice to think there's some purely altruistic groups out there that just want to keep us safe. The Foundation is certainly not convinced that the Three Moons Initiative is one of them.